so this is the second episode like I promised you before today we're going to be talking about sex yes we'll be talking about sex that's a word that you know Christians don't like to talk about and they make it seem like a taboo but it's not a taboo God created that and wants us to observe it and enjoy it that's you know my own understanding so I'm going to talk to be talking with Mr. Soji again who has a lot of knowledge and wisdom about this issue <laughs> So we're going to talk about it, but before then, I'll just ask him to tell us uh, a little bit about um, sex and marriage, and then I will throw my questions to you. Now, these questions, like I said in, in the part one, are questions from married women, from people that really want to seek more knowledge and wants to know better. A so. man after God's heart, Mr. Soji Olayin, is going to tell us a little bit about what you understand about sex in a Christian marriage. Okay, sex in a Christian marriage is an activity that is meant to be pleasurable, to be maximum. Sex in marriage, first of all, sex in itself was designed by God. And God put all the sexual uh, elements sexual organs in human beings for first of all pleasure maximum pleasure and then if the couples wish they can now have children based on that particular activity so first it's an activity that is most pleasurable most desired it should be most desired in marriage in christian marriage Right, and then um, we should seek to find that pleasure as much as we can in marriage. That's interesting. Thank Let's you. go straight into the questions now. This very first woman said, What do you do if your husband will not have sex with you for years? Okay, now, so this question, right, cannot be answered off the cuff just like that there's no way I can answer this question accurately why because I don't have the details I mean so a man has not had sex with his wife for years and then the question is what should the man do or what is costing we need to know why why can we set some can, scenarios can, do? can we set some scenarios okay yes take for example health reason Okay. Or um, what's the other reason I was thinking about? Health reason or lack of interest. Okay, so let's take one after the other. Okay. Health reason. Okay, so your husband is not having sex with you for years because of health reasons. He should seek for medical help. Let him seek for medical help. See a sex therapist who can work with his health. What if he's refusing? What if he's refusing to seek help? Okay, so he refuses to seek help. The truth is, practically speaking, there is nothing the wife can do. There, is, you, you, there are some things that you cannot force a man to go and do. He won't listen to you. Ego, call it ego, call it whatever, call it he's just not interested anymore. I have an example. I have, I have so many examples. There are a lot of men that have some sex issues with their wives, medical, medically uh, connected and they just don't want to use any medication they don't want to see any doctor and they're just there and the wife is frustrated so uh, what can she do she can only plead talk to him beg him if she wants to some will say ah let, let him why, why should i be begging for sex no if you want it it's your husband sometimes there's always this psychological you know, I'm not good enough. I'm not man enough. That happens to men. For that reason, they don't even want to see their, their men folk. They don't want to see a doctor to tell them that their libido is not high or that they don't have a strong erection. These are things that are really very, very, very sad indeed. And um, a lot of men shy away from wanting to come out, you know, to tell, to, to seek help. You know, so really, there is little that the woman can do. The only other thing they can do, oh, they can Google and check stuff and buy stuff off, you know, off the shelf, 
to use. I mean, the Viagra stuff and all the rest of them. So, um, it's interesting you mentioned that. Sorry, I need to stop you there because I, this question I have to ask you. Now, I don't know if it's an African thing again. I'm not trying to label this as an African man thing. There has been a lot of instances where, you know, a, a wife will try to say to her husband, oh, let's do this or let's try this, or they will even ask for sex or even say something relating to sex. And the husband will be like, what have you been watching? What has been teaching you? You know, take it the wrong way and becomes an issue saying maybe the wife has been exposed and then doubt sets in and it becomes really messy. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that happens too. Yeah. And then we are talking about the Christian setting, right? Yeah. Is that... it is it appropriate for a Christian woman to say to her husband, I want sex or let's try this? She should. No, she should. Well, why should she not? Well, because why should she not? a lot she... of times a... people okay. don't know what to expect from their partner, you know. Then like you don't I said, know your like an African man, like, how dare you then you don't know do your things partner. like that. Hmm. Then you don't know your partner. So you are married to a stranger. Hmm. Why, why, why should not The truth is, a lot of women don't even want to initiate sex because they feel that, like you're saying, oh, it is the man that should initiate. Sometimes the woman wants, but because the man is not initiating, she stays there and she goes to bed. Mm. What is wrong with a woman initiating sex? Now, the part that you first mentioned, that the man who might be looking at her, that what have you been watching and all yeah. of that, that happens too. But if the woman has come out clearly from the get-go that, say, I've done stuff, I know stuff, this is who I am, even before they got married, yeah, I don't, personally speaking, it's already becoming like a controversy out there. I don't encourage sex before marriage in the Christian fold, right? So, but you can discuss sex and you can discuss what you know or what you have done before if you have if you have been involved before you guys meet there are people that they've had a lot of sex before they become born again they meet and then they get married you can discuss all that know each other know your feelings know let me know what you know and what you have done and then we move on from there so if a man does not if, that kind of man shouldn't come and now start asking the wife what have you been watching? You should have known that woman before now. Hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, there's a, so there's a problem there which needs to actually be resolved. And like I said again, these are the things that I tell young people who are just about to enter into marriage. Disclose what you need to disclose, especially the thing. You may not disclose your past, so to say, because that's another conversation. And that's another, you know, like um, uh, controversial issue. Mm -hmm. Should you tell your husband to be your, your spouse to be all your past, what you have done with your body in the past, mm -hmm. and all of that? That's a. I'm not sure it's in these questions. Yeah, no, but yet. it's a. But it's a. Another it, topic. It's a valid. Yes, another yeah. topic on its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you should. You should. A woman should be able to tell her husband. In the, there's a part. There's a part. Um, in a, there's a. There's a place in Nigeria. A, a tribe, a region where the women will ask their husband a hundred times. Anytime they want to ask, they say, oh yeah, 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 let's do. You know, uh, there is also this part in, in our place. The Yoruba people permit me to say, yeah. you know, they like to. So that is what form, like we say, is it food? Yeah. Uh, you know, so oh. they just want to like, and it's not as if they don't want it, oh but they just try to form. Form holiness. Spiritualism. Form spirituality. Yeah. Okay, so let's go straight to the, my next question. Okay, now, um, of recent, uh, a lot of women in my age bracket, you know, between 40 and 50 ish, um, there's so much going on in our life right now emotionally, medically, and everything. And of course, premenopausal state, that's where we're at. And a lot of women in my age group, has come to realize that sex is not really what they want at this stage, you know. And so, you know, they make up excuses to their husband because a lot of them can't open up to say, look, this is what my body is going through. This is what I'm feeling, you know. I don't know why, but I don't want sex as much as I used to. I mean, and it seems that, you know, 
men at this stage are even more active than when they were younger. So how do women cope? How can they relate to this to their husband to make their husband understand why their body don't want sex that much now? And whether it's to get better or not, then they don't know. So how do they relate this to their partner? And how does their partner, you know, have this understanding of their wife not wanting sex as much as they used to? So, we, we always say that in marriage, one of the key um, components to make it work is understanding. Mm. Understanding. The men have to be understanding and, and know that their wives are going through these stages. Understanding, understanding and discipline. Understanding and discipline. Now, this understanding and discipline, is it for both of them? Or for the of... man, to okay. start with. Okay. Because the wife is the one dealing with the problem. Yeah. She's going through premenopausal, menopausal, and all of that. She doesn't want sex as, as she used to. He needs to be understanding, he needs to be disciplined. One. Two, he needs to find ways. There are, all, there are ways in which you can still make your wife enjoy sex. Even if you are going through those stages, yeah. there are ways. Do you know, Pastor, I'm sorry, I'll quote you because it's interesting you're saying this. But you'll be surprised that no many people know this. And again, I'll go back to African men. I don't know if it's a rigid thing or they just feel that because you're their wife, they cannot do it with you. It's only maybe if they have a side chick or, or they can just fantasize about it. I think there needs to be a, 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 enough knowledge out there for men in particular because I really don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it because a lot of women are at this stage right now and don't even know what to do with their body or what's going on in their body. And even the perimenopausal thing, just the knowledge just came, it's always been there, but the knowledge just came up recently. And people are like, actually, this is what's going on with my body. So women are just getting to understand this phase of their life. And the men, a lot of them are not understanding. They just feel there's nothing wrong with you. You ju you're just making up excuses not to have sex in your marriage. And, you know, they make you feel like it's, their, it's your duty. And I don't think it's a duty. It's something that both of them should enjoy together, isn't it? Yeah. I, I seem to be taking over this conversation. But I just wanted to tell you, you know, what some of these feelings are yeah. from the woman's perspective. Yeah, yeah. so you are, you are correct. Yeah, you are very correct. So, like I was saying, it still, it still comes down to understanding and discipline. And it also boils down again to communication. I was going to talk about yeah. communication. And education. <laughs> yes, yes, information. I mean, your body is going through stuff. Thank God that we are where we are today in the world. There's internet. There's Google. Yeah. You can actually go and find out what's wrong with you. A lot of people found out their situation through what they have read. Read it with your husband. Let your husband understand what's going on. It's discipline and understanding from the man's perspective. If a man is not understanding, if he's not disciplined, if you ask for the ask, ask sex from the wife and the wife is not giving it to him, of course, you know the next thing he's going to do. Oh, a lot of babes are out there now that he's going, he's going to cheat. He's going to cheat on his wife. And he's going to tell that, well, it's not my fault. You bring up an excuse. And my wife is not giving what she should give me. So what will I do? And I need to get this thing done. Right? So it's, um, it's, it's always good to have a man who is disciplined and who is understanding in your life. How will you know that, that will, though? Uh, How will you choose that kind okay, of man? Oh, okay, so... <laughs> in the husband's market. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, this is also why it's good for a woman to be sure of who he's getting married to, number one. I understand, yeah, I understand that some men pretend... You Even get women, because you can't be sure pretend. until you are in it, then you know what you are in for. Yes. But then you can learn, and you can learn. You can learn to change. There are some things I don't do again in my marriage because I deliberate. I intentionally learned to drop them, and there are some things I'm doing now. I intentionally learned to do them. Because you're a good man, and you want it to work. Be yeah, because I want my marriage to. And you know so better. Every man, every man that wants his marriage to work should do that. Yeah. And every woman too should also learn to do that. Yeah. There are things that I I was not used to. I was not used to, but because my wife wanted it, I started doing them. Because she wanted it, and I'm sure if you really want your mind to work, you will also do the same. So if your wife, now here's the thing that men should really understand. 
Some men don't. As far as they are concerned, they want to have sex because they desire pleasure. A man should want to have sex because he wants to give pleasure to the wife. The wife should want to have sex because she wants to give pleasure to the husband. I agree with you on that. So, if I want to have sex with my wife, and she has issues, premenopause, and she's not, honestly speaking, the desire for sex should just drop. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love okay. that. So, a man that loves his wife should want to discipline himself to be able to get to that point. That's just fantastic. Thank you for that answer. That's it. It's not that, it's not that you don't, it's not that the man does not want it. But this woman is always saying, why do you want to have sex with a woman who's not going to enjoy it? It becomes a duty, isn't it? You want to call it a duty? It's selfishness. No, it's selfishness. No, it's actually selfishness. Or chores becomes, you know, part of the chores you have to that do. It's part of the chores. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that's wrong. And that's why a lot of women don't even enjoy sex with their husbands. Yes. Because the guy just wants to have a half of that. And that's it. And won't even care whether the woman is there or not. Yeah. Whether she's got to the same level with him. Yeah. And most of the women don't get to that same level. They don't. With that, those kind of men yeah. that are like, let me just do my own and do. Yeah. Because Go. the older a woman gets, the more difficult it is. The longer it, time it takes to get to that level, the, the orgasm level drops. That's, wow. that's, I mean, that, and, that point is key. What you just said now. Yeah. So they don't know. So they, uh, some men don't care. Mm. They just want it. Sex is not supposed to be a selfish activity. Exactly. It's a selfish activity. You want to give pleasure to the person you want to have sex with, not yourself. You want it, you want the sex, yes, but you want her to enjoy it too. Because in your giving, you get as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you are supposed to get your giving, but for them, they just want to get. Yeah. They don't want to give. Many of them don't even understand this. Wow. There are some men that don't even know that's true. that a woman gets to a climax. You're right. They don't even know. So You're right. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your wisdom and all. Thank Thank you so I have much. one more question from one of the ladies. I'm okay. keeping it till the end. Okay. So that's the question I'm going to wrap this up okay. with. Um, I'm even thinking about to say it really. So what do you do as a Christian woman if you find out that your husband is interested in men? Two things. Is he still interested in you? Does he have sex with you? With no. The woman? Well, no. The woman okay. said no. Okay, so he has stopped having sex. And then he's having sex with another man. Yes. Okay, and so also, we can also have a scenario. What if he's still having sex with the wife? Okay. There are two things that a woman can do. One, pray. You are talking about a Christian woman, right? Yes. So pray for your husband and let that spirit like live in the boss. In the Christian, it's good to mention Christian. And that's what I'm talking about this. Because right now, in the world today, it's, it's about, oh, don't judge anyone. Everybody has a right to feel you know, um, to gravitate towards any particular gender and all of that is not Christianly. It's that particular action is a sin. It's a clear sin in the Bible, right? So, two things. One, if you love your husband so well and you want him to eventually, when we leave this earth, enter the kingdom, you don't want him to to continue to fight that sin. You pray for me. That is soul that you need to win for Christ. One, two. If your faith cannot carry it, you actually have a premise to leave that marriage because the bible says so jesus christ said so that except for fornication that's even more than fornication that you should not leave but you can leave based on that so it's up to you to take that decision either you pray you want to leave that marriage you want to leave that marriage then you pray for your husband pray for his soul to be one and let that spirit that makes him to gravitate towards a fellow man leave him and god can answer our prayers it has happened before, it's going to happen. Miracles happen every day. Things happen. And then if you wait, it depends, now it depends on the threshold of patience. If you're not patient enough, you've done that for like four, five, six years, and it's not happening, and it's affecting you emotionally, it's affecting you psychologically, and you cannot take it anymore, that it's even almost causing you to fall into sin yourself. Ah, then you can leave. Even if you don't divorce, you can separate from him so that you can have a clear brain of your own because it's going to be strange for you to be a Christian moral woman staying in the same house or being married to a gay man. Yeah, so I mean your stand on it is, you know, if you if you um if you know you can your spirit cannot take it, 
You yeah. opt out. Yeah, that, that's it. I'm, like, thank God I'm not a pastor. That's why I tell you that I'm not a pastor. <laughs> I'm, I'm a realist. Mm. And I say it as it is. Really. I mean, the Bible says that if your spouse, your regular spouse, cheats on you, means that cheats on if, if your husband cheats with a woman out there, it's bad enough, it's a good premise to divorce. Him. Yeah. You're not talking about not, he's not even cheating with a woman, he's cheating oh, with a man. Mm. Wow. Get your, <laughs> get your things together, pray about it. If it's not working. Mm. You really learned um, a thing or two from this uh, particular episode, and I hope you're blessed one way or the other. And I think the last question was a very um, witty one and very controversial one as well. So I think a lot of people will make their decision according to their own fate. But you know, one thing I, that um, Soji said was that if you're in a situation like this, if any of your partner is in a, in a gay relationship, if you know that your spirit cannot take it, you have to pray. Now this prayer is not that, you know, the, the, the whatever should get better and you stay there, that decision you have to make. But your prayer is mainly to help save the soul of your partner and then you can decide to either run, walk or crawl <laughs> out of the relationship. The choice is yours. Did I put that right, uh, Mr. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on my channel okay. to show light onto this. I hope when next you're in town, I'll have other topics to talk to you about. And uh, like I said before, it has its own platform as well on IG and on YouTube. I'm going to put all the details in my description box. You need to follow him. You need to hear him speak about topics Christians don't want to talk about, topics people generally don't want to talk about that they shy away from. And you will learn a thing or two from his wisdom. So guys, in my next vlog, video, DIY, fashion, and all that I bring to the station, it's bye for now, guys. Stay safe, guys. Bye. We say so good. Say bye. Bye-bye. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.